Hey everybody, welcome to another video. Got something pretty exciting to show you this time around, and that is parallax occlusion map decals. And what makes this possible is the um, custom material response we talked about in the previous video. So you may want to have seen that to better understand what's going on here. But first, I just want to show you this effect working here. So if we um, take a look at this uh, decal here, you can see that as I move it around this, um, this cylinder, we have nice parallax effects applying. And you know this is in fact a decal. I can uh, grab it, drag and drop another one, and just add detail. You know in this case a, a bolt wherever I want. I can even go ahead and drag and drop one up here on the sphere, and that works. And I can also uh, scale and rotate these too. So um, normally you can scale and rotate decals with your transform. Uh, but with Palm, um, it's actually kind of useful to be able to scale it independently of the decal uh, transform because sometimes you're going to want uh, the bounds of the decal to be larger than the decal itself because of the extrusion. Otherwise, it'll be cut off. And then rotation, here you can see that rotating. And um, this is kind of special because um, normally if you try to rotate a, um, a palm decal, you get this, right? So if you use the transforms, this is gonna happen. And that's obviously not what you want. So there needs to be a way in the material to do that. Um, so, and then here is a, um, hemisphere I wanted to show an example of something that extrudes as well so you can see that works fine all the way up to get to an extreme angle and just like all parallax occlusion mapping it eventually breaks down if it either gets too steep or if in this case the um, the decal extrudes beyond um, the bounds right so after you start looking past the bounds of the decal then it stops working this is why it's good to be able to scale them independently so you know, you can have large bounds and a small decal inside it if you need. Um, and then the other thing that this does is the decal is actually um, handled by the receiving material. So what that means is that depending on the material that the mesh has, actually change the decal that's appearing on it, right? So without changing the decal itself, I can change the material that the decal is being received by and get a different result. What's powerful about that is that you can have one decal do a lot, right? So if you have a decal that's supposed to be like nuts, bolts, screws, nails, so on, depending on the surface you place it on, it'll change the decal. So you put it in wood, it's gonna be a nail. Put it in metal, it'll be a screw. Uh, right? So that sort of thing can all be handled in the shader automatically without you needing to worry about a thing. And then in addition to that, you can have the ability to have one of these decal colors in addition to having like rotation and scale, it could also cycle through an index, which I have an example of over here, right? So here's an atlas. And if we um, go into this, uh, this is, those are using the decal color node, but just for this example, I'll use an index uh, just as a parameter. I can cycle through and get, you know, here's 64 different um, indices that we can cycle through and uh, select, All right? So each of those could be a different decal or um, you know, a different response to the same decal, changing the way that they look. Uh, so that's all cool. But if you've ever tried parallax occlusion map decals, you've probably run into roadblocks and not been able to get these results because uh, parallax occlusion mapping relies on surface tangents. Uh, and decals tangent um, doesn't work the same way as a mesh tangent does uh, in that it, it's just always pointing in a particular direction. And so what it ends up happening is if you uh, try to rotate it, the illusion breaks. If you try to um, put it on a surface that isn't lined up with its tangent, the effect breaks. So you know anybody who's tried a basic parallax occlusion mapping decal like this, you know, just treating it like a normal material, it's probably been frustrated and just failed to get the effect working, right? But 
<clears throat> in my previous video, I talked about how custom material responses to decals can allow the receiving material to choose how to display the decal. And you know, in that example, I showed a normal map where it read the tangent space normal that a decal was feeding it. And rather than doing what um, this, uh, this right-hand cube is doing, which is just applying the nor tangent space normal like a sticker, which leads to incorrect shading, instead it could correctly transform it into its own tangent space to get proper shading. Right, so we have the wrong shading, proper shading. Uh, the same logic applies to normal maps, or excuse me, not, not to normal maps, but parallax occlusion maps. So in this case, this is the like the bad handling. It's just like this. It's just sticking it on like a sticker, and that only works if the tangents line up the way that they need to. Uh, whereas, you know, this can work regardless because it's the material handling this response. So these work the same way. The decal is actually just a set of UV coordinates, basically nothing else. And it's the material that's deciding based off of, you know, various factors, how to draw that decal, um, and, you know, and is ultimately sampling and applying the parallax occlusion mapping. And that allows it to appear correct from any direction. So if we go over to this example again, um, it's gonna be easier to understand if we look at this simplified version, All right? So this decal, this is really all there is to it. It is quite literally just a um, texture coordinates being passed through and then an index being passed through to the base color. And then this material here takes that and reads it as texture coordinates. All right, so if I look at the texture coordinates, that's that. And I can, um, I can move them around by moving the decal around, right? And so rather than the decal applying a texture directly, it's telling the material, here's a coordinate system for you to use, apply the texture on your own. So when we do that, now it can apply, you know, in this case, just a little grid texture. Um, but this is powerful because we can do the same thing with parallax occlusion mapping, right? Because parallax occlusion mapping, one of the inputs is the UVs that we're going to apply that UV, uh, that parallax mapping to. So we can take the UVs from our decal without actually drawing our decal by altering the um, debuffer uh, response. So if I go to here, debuffer response none, right? We tell it don't draw the decal. Instead, sample the decal and then let me decide how to draw it we can access this data. Uh, and then this is just to fix the MIP mapping and apply a bias uh, so that we don't get seams because anytime you're messing with UVs or uh, texture coordinates, you need to potentially consider uh, deriving your own um, MIP maps. So this is a really simple example, right? <clears throat> but the um, parallax occlusion mapping works exactly the same way. We have our receiving material and this is gonna look really complicated, uh, but it's taking the UVs that it's getting from the um, texture coordinates and it's passing it to a parallax occlusion map node, which is passing the altered UVs to a texture sample and passing that texture sample to the final material output. Um, but there is something interesting I noticed when I started this um, material, which is that if we take this um, decal and we look closely at its UV coordinates, what we'll find is that they don't appear to be um, a full bit depth. Like there's a lot of stair stepping in here and we got a really noticeable grid. So hopefully that's visible. Um, the problem with that is that if we try to sample a texture with it using um, something like that, we get really pixelated textures, right? So look how, how how bad this looks, right? The A1 here is super pixelated. Whereas, um, you know, if we zoom in on it, um, here's how it should look, right? So something's happening there. And I think it's that the bit depth of the decal buffer is just too low. I, I, I suspect it's half of the required bit depth to get a smooth transition. 
So the way I dealt with that to prevent these parallax occlusion apps decals from looking super pixelated is to basically just use twice as much buffer. Uh, so what I mean by that is if we go over to the decal here, you'll see that rather than just punching the texture coordinates straight in to the base color, I'm doing a bit of math here. So what's happening is I'm multiplying the texture coordinates by eight and then fracking them, which gives me this. All right, so this is just zero to one uh, texture coordinates being repeated eight by eight times. And then I'm also splitting off another set of texture coordinates. Uh, this is applying a bit of an um, offset to them, depending on how much it's split. So we have this little offset there. Then I'm multiplying it, and then I'm rounding it, and I'm dividing back down again, which gives us this look. And what this is, is a set of offsets for the fracked UV coordinates, All right, So our UV coordinates here are zero to one over and over and over again. And then these act as an offset to shift it. So instead of being zero to one, it's uh, one to two or two to three or three to four. And um, you know that's basically going to allow us to create a, um, a set of UVs that are full bit depth, but only needing four half bit depth channels, right? So we're taking this, we're pumping it into the R and the G of the base color and the um, metallic and the specular um, as well. So we use four channels to pass these different um, values, these RG values over <clears throat> and we sample them instead. So over here, instead of just having one base color node coming out sampling the RG, I've also grabbed the roughness GB, which is the um, uh, metallic and specular. And I'm recombining those into this material, which basically allows us to create a UV map, just like before. But unlike the other one, this one has enough bit depth to sample a texture coordinate uh, or act as a, a texture coordinate sample and not um, not be pixelated. So all of that's really just a lot of extra work to, to make our UV coordinates good. Then I've got a scale by center, uh, which is taking the blue channel of the base color. And I've also got R for rotation here, going into a modified version of the parallax occlusion mapping node that can allow for rotation. I'll uh, link in the description how you can modify the parallax occlusion mapping node to allow rotation. Then just like before, that goes to a texture sample. When you're rotating um, parallax occlusion mapping, um, it's going to rotate the normal map. And if you're rotating a normal map, you need to counter rotate the vectors in order to get correct normals. So this here is a, you know, based on the, um, you know, I've done a video about rotating normal maps. So you, you don't understand that, watch that. But this just counter rotates the, um, the normal map vectors so that regardless of the rotation of the, the decal, it's still getting correct lighting. And then uh, this is just flattening normal, uh, nothing special there. I was using that for testing and that's nothing. This is just to add a feathering um, so that the normal blends smoothly from the decal to the, to the mesh normals. It's probably not really necessary, but my case, my normal map was kind of bad, ugly, um, made for the purpose of this video and nothing else. So, um, you know, it didn't really tr smoothly transition. So that just kind of tapers it off. So we get a nice smooth transition from the, uh, the normal. So, um, yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much all there is to this. Um, you know, again, you, it's a complicated material, but not as bad as it looks. You just kind of have to understand um, the logic behind why I'm doing the UVs this way. And then, you know, outside of this, it's really just kind of a standard parallax occlusion map material. And of course, you can also apply all the normal stuff to it as well. Uh, but you just have to remember that you've got two different 
UV sets happening here. And so, you know, just, um, I guess the, the main takeaway here is that when you're using the material decal response, um, you can think of the decal as general purpose data. You don't have to think of decals as a sticker that just applies a texture to an object. You can look at it as a method for passing data of any kind, such as texture coordinates or indices or whatever you want to your material for that material to do what you need it to do. And when you treat it like that, you can get really cool effects that would otherwise be potentially either impossible or very difficult to achieve. Um, it is possible to get parallax solution mapping working without this, just using normal decals. But you'd have to set up a blueprint that, um, you know, that passed the tangents along to the node, and the node would need to be modified in order to understand that. Uh, and you know, whereas this, you can just use this the default node, uh, or you know, if you want to get rotation in there, um, then you can modify it. But um, you know, then you can get parallax occlusion mapped decals. So um, that's pretty much. All I have here, um, sometimes just beware, it is still su subject to tangents, right? So if I uh, drop this here, it looks wrong. If I fix the rotation, it looks right, right? It's still sensitive to the, the tangent of the surface that it's placed on. Um, so you can't rotate it using the transforms. And you might occasionally, you know, if you put it on a surface and it looks wrong, you just have to say, OK, well, what's the correct rotation and align the tangents up. Uh, that could be automated using a blueprint or something, but it's not that inconvenient in my opinion. Um, so um, that is that. Thanks for watching.